I'm Abby Marsh. I'm a professor of psychology at Georgetown University. I describe it as an emotion that is a particular response to one person. You love being around that person, you take a lot of pleasure from being in their company, and you're very distressed when you are separated from them. Some of the reasons that love feels good is because of a lot of feel-good hormones that are involved. Dopamine is the sort of reward-seeking, this energized, excited uh, neurotransmitter, uh, and the striatum that is definitely involved in feeling in love. The hormone that is most specific to feeling in love, that is most specific to the social response, is oxytocin, and then um, a closely related um, neuropeptide called vagopressin. Nature really wants love to feel good, right? Nature's imperative is that we reproduce, and love is one of the mechanisms nature has put in place to make sure that we do that. The species that tend to pair bond are the ones whose babies require a lot of work. We know that offspring who have two parents who are taking care of them tend to do better on average than offspring who don't. Um, and it's again because they are so much work, especially if there's more than one of them. And so we think that nature set us up to form long-term pair bonds to ensure that our uh, offspring would have the best chance of survival in the long term. Prairie voles are really unique in that uh, when a male and female prairie vole mate, it seems to sort of solidify this very long-term bond between them. And as compared to a lot of other mammals, the male doesn't just disappear after they mate. He sticks around, he helps raise the babies, and he'll stay with the mom usually for the rest of their lives. There's this very closely related cousin called the montane vole that looks more or less like a prairie vole and it's similar in a lot of ways, but it forms no pair bonds. They're um, what's called promiscuous. They, uh, as soon as they mate, that you know, peace out and uh, that's the last the mom will probably see of him. And what seems to be the case is that in prairie voles, they have really dense oxytocin receptors in regions like the nucleus accumbens. When they mate, trigger the flood of oxytocin to be released. That triggers a flood of dopamine to be released in the nucleus accumbens, which causes, for example, the female to find that particular male really rewarding to be around. She's like, I like that dude and I would like to stick with him. And they do. And you can actually mimic this response really well. If you um, inject oxytocin into a female uh, prairie bull, she'll just like seek to form a pair bond with any other male prairie bull in the vicinity. And then if you block oxytocin receptors, you can totally cut off that pair bonding response and you'll basically turn prairie voles into montane voles. They'll be uninterested in forming pair bonds if you just block the oxytocin receptors. I think our best guess is that humans are probably built similarly, that um, people who excite romantic feelings in us probably also trigger um, increases in oxytocin, which results in this increase in dopamine. And then we find that person, someone we want to stick with. Uh, there is absolutely a lot of research uh, comparing romantic love to uh, addiction um, and the way that people can be addicted to a specific drug. Romantic love is almost like being addicted to a specific person and there are lots of similar neurotransmitters involved, uh, dopamine and opioids being um, the most prominent but there are other ones as well. And there are things about being in love that are actually sort of like being addicted to something, right? You are um, sort of obsessed with thinking about that thing all the time. When you're away from it, you want more. Um, your capacity for risk taking uh, to, to get that thing that you crave so much is increased. And the main hormone that comes into play is something called corticotropin releasing factor or CRF. And this is a compound that seems to spike in the brain uh, either when you're separated from the object of your love or if you're separated again from your drug of choice. Um, and this is a hormone that definitely regulates the stress system and it seems to be involved in the feelings of acute stress that you feel right after separation from a loved one and then in the depression that seems to sink in long term. We're nowhere near knowing enough about love to take the mystery out of it. I think that, that if really what people are worried about is that knowing about neurotransmitters like oxytocin is going to take the mystery out of love. That day is a long, long way in the future. I don't think they have anything to worry about. Not surprisingly, there hasn't actually been a huge amount of research on this topic. Um, we don't know nearly as much about love as we do about some other emotions. There's all different kinds of love in the world. We can feel romantic love or we can feel the love of a parent for their offspring. Um, one theory is that all of these different kinds of love that adults can feel for each other um, emerged out of the maternal love system. 